Rick and Morty, the rickety wrecked over. Cold open. Interior, Smith dining room, morning. Morty, Rick, Jerry, Summer, and Beth sit at the dining table as they casually eat breakfast. Jerry is buttering his bagel next to Morty. And that there is how you butter a bagel. Ooh, wow, Jerry. I guess employers are really looking for proficient bagel butterers these days. Jerry looks irritated. Beth, how can you let your father talk like that when he's living in our house? Beth is occupied by her phone. It's your house too, Jerry, and he has a point. Jerry sighs with a sad look before hearing a knock on the door. Mail comes through the door slot. Oh yay, the mail is here! Rick rolls his eyes as Jerry walks towards the door to pick up the mail. Hey Rick, I have to do a history project on world religions this weekend. You think you could help me out? Don't waste your time, Morty. Most of that history stuff was because one guy did some drugs and then, you know, that guy whizzed in another guy's mouth and made up stories pissed on from one generation to generation. It, Religion in a nutshell, Morty. Jerry returns to the dining room with a pile of mail. He begins handing out to everyone. Okay, my new dress! Jerry finishes passing out the mail. With nothing left in his hands, Jerry looks sad. I guess there's not going to be any Harry Potter cosplays today. Beth opens her envelope. Oh, what's this? Out pops a hologram, accompanied by sad Sarah McLaughlin-like music. <laughs> the hologram cycles through. A blob creature without eyes, accidentally impaling itself on a spike. A humanoid fish alien being beheaded by humanoid tangerines wearing turbans. A humanoid giraffe alien seen dying in a pool of blood. Alien blob Zanzar Flip-Flop is sitting on a couch with a bandaged humanoid toad beside him. Hi, I'm intergalactic superstar Zanzar Flip-Flop. Every day an intergalactic species goes extinct from our universe, but you, Beth Smith, have the power to make a difference. Your expertise in horse surgery can help save the Zimbrabian species from extinction by saving the last of its... Rick hits the mute button on the hologram. Yeah, I've heard enough of that crap. What the hell, Dad? I feel like I could actually do some good here for once. Rick returns to his food. Don't waste your time, Beth. Any species about to fizzle from existence is a species constantly fucking people straight up the ass. Do the right thing here. Let the species die a quick, easy death. Beth, with an annoyed look, presses the unmute button on the hologram. High energy, exciting music is now playing. And all participating surgeons are provided an all-expense, paid-free trip to Zanzar Brubra. A city with grandiose, monumental, alien-looking buildings are seen with floating beaches and endless purple waterfalls. Yeah, forget what I said. Let's give it a slow, painful death. Uh, pack your bags, because we're going to Alien Vegas, bitches! And cold open. Act 1, exterior Smith driveway morning. Rick and Beth walk out of the garage, packing their bags into the trunk of Rick's spaceship. Jerry, Summer, and Morty are in the front yard setting them off. Have fun at home with your dad, you two! Summer, try to make sure nothing happens to your dad, alright? Don't worry about me, Mom. Beth, make sure you bring the extra cell phone charger. I want to make sure we stay in constant contact. Beth rolls her eyes with Jerry. Alright, taking care of Jerry. Bye, Mom. Beth, Bye, Beth. Beth gets in the spaceship while Summer and Jerry walk inside. Rick takes a swig from his flask and opens the door to his spaceship. Before Rick can shut the door, Morty stops him. Wait, Rick. How am I going to finish my project without you? Easy. Just don't do it. Dad. If you want to keep going on adventures with Morty, you'll find a way to help him with his project. Yeah, all right, all right. Jeez. I'll help. help. Rick gives Morty a flash drive looking device. Take this, Morty. It'll unlock my supercomputer in the garage. You just gotta tell it what to do. Rick takes a swig from his flask. Now I'm giving you a little something called responsibility here. Rick grabs Morty by the shirt collar, staring him in the eye. So don't mess it up, Morty. You think you can do that, Morty? Do you? Do you, do you Morty? Morty pushes himself away from Rick. Yeah, Rick, jeez, chill out. I can handle things around here without you. I'll be fine, Rick. Oh, yeah, sure, Morty. I'm sure you can last the whole weekend without me. You'll see, Rick. I'm going to have a super awesome weekend without you. You'll see. Whatever. Come on, let's go, Dad. Rick gets in the car and rolls down his window. Also, tell the computer to turn off the temporal quantumizer. 
Now, let's get Wubba Lubba Dub Dubs out of here. Peace out, Girl Scout. Rick rolls up his window and takes off into outer space. Marty starts walking back into the garage. Oh, I'm gonna show Rick. Interior, Smith Garage, continuous. Marty I'll, walks over to the supercomputer. I'll show him. How hard can this be? Marty plugs the flash drive into the supercomputer. Hello, Marty Smith. How may I assist you? Oh, uh, okay, uh, can you help me write my history project on Jesus? Confirmed. Processing temporal punctuation for Jesus Christ to assist with history project. Wait, what? A sudden purple electric zap strikes behind the supercomputer. Blood splatters out from the machine in all directions across the garage. When the purple zap disappears, a 33-year-old Arab slash black man, Jesus Christ, is laying on the ground, bleeding out from holes in both his hands and feet. Jesus screams in a foreign language while Morty panics, running around the garage. Um. Cut to exterior, zero mass hotel, valet, continuous. Rick pulls to the front of a large, phallic obsidian hotel. Alien blobs wearing ballet hats open the spaceship door. Oh man, we're finally here. Those space rides really take a hell of a toll on the back. Rick gets out of the spaceship with his bags, taking a swig from his flask and cracking his back. The valet waits for Rick's keys. Rick closes the door on the valet and walks away. Yeah, I'm not paying you to park. The valet blob looks sad as Rick presses a button on his keys, making the spaceship fly off. Interior, Zero Mass Hotel, Lobby, Continuous. Beth and Rick walk in with their bags and immediately become weightless. They float upwards and grab onto handles, propelling them forward. In the background, a mosquito-looking humanoid insect alien, a gromflamite, is wearing a bellboy hat and pushing bags through zero gravity. Dad, I'm really glad we are getting to finally spend some quality bonding time together. In the background, they pass by a floating bar with alien patrons pushing floating liquid balls into their mouths. Rick has eyes on the bar. Yeah. Uh -huh. In the background, we see a casino with a floating roulette wheel as alien blobs jump into the wheel and roll around. We begin slowly panning in on Beth's face. I feel like this trip will really help bridge the gap in our relationship after being distant for so many years. I've just been waiting so long to learn more about you and the things you've... We quickly pan out to reveal Rick is no longer holding onto his propelling handle. Dad? Dad? Please still be part of my life? Yeah. Beth looks down to find Rick swimming towards the casino, dragging his bags behind him. I'll be down in the casino. Beth looks irritated as she hangs onto her propelling handle. The propelling handle takes Beth to the front desk. Beth approaches the front desk alien, a humanoid cat alien. Hello, ma'am. What's the name you'll be checking in under today? Beth Smith. Well, right, Miss Smith. We'll have a room booked for you here. Overlooking the quadra doo doo new blue. Would you like us to provide you with any zoop zoops during your stay? Uh, I don't... Do my ears deceive me or do I hear the name of a Beth Smith? Bustamante Frenzino, a gorgeous bipedal humanoid stallion, floats towards Beth. My name is Bustamante Sex Arts Frenzino, mm -hmm. but you can just call me Boosty, my sweet, sweet Beth Smith. My species is forever in your debt. Bustamante kneels down, floating, as he begins to slobber Beth's hand. Beth blushes. <laughs> Cut to interior, Morty's bedroom, day. We close in on Jesus sleeping in Morty's bed wearing a metal collar with the lights turned off. The lights turn on when Jesus jolts out of bed. Fuck you, Judas! You fucked it up! Morty walks over towards Jesus with a glass of water. Hey, don't worry, man. Everything is uh, A-OK. -okay. Took care of those bloody holes for you. <laughs> what? Where am I and what are these sounds coming out of my mouth? Well, this is my bedroom, and that's a collar my grandpa's zany supercomputer put on you, so you can help me with my history project. Are you really Jesus, though? C -c computer what No, of, of course, of course I'm Jesus. Wait, why, why wouldn't I be? <laughs> I mean, uh, I obviously know where we are. Yeah, I thought <laughs> you were supposed to be white with blue eyes and dreamy blonde hair. What the heck is a white person? Don't know where you heard that heretic nonsense. If you really are Jesus, prove it to me. Like, your name is... Jesus closes his eyes and wriggles his fingers. Morty Smith. Wow, how'd you do that? That's the power of the Father, young Morty. Wow, you must be hungry. 
You gotta come down for something to eat. Home skillet. Oh, yeah, for sure. Jesus follows Morty out of the room. When Morty isn't looking, Jesus crumples something and drops it on the ground. Interior, Smith dining room, day. Jerry is wearing a cooking apron, placing eggs and sausage on the table, while Summer is at the table playing on her phone. Jesus and Morty enter the dining room. Oh, Morty, you didn't tell me you were having company for breakfast. Uh, yeah, th this is my new friend, uh, JC. We're working on my history project together. Oh, I see. Jerry does some air quotes. Working on your history project? I remember when I used to work on projects with your mother every Sunday in high school. What times? It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Smith. Uh, thanks for having me for breakfast. Oh, Morty, where'd you find this one? You better hold on to him before he finds someone else to work with. Uh, sure, Dad. Yo, JC, can you tell me about your relationship with your dad, homie? Jesus has his eyes on Summer as he disregards Morty. In a little. In a little. Jesus walks past Morty and over towards Summer. Hey, JC. Trendy necklace you got there. I love an older man with a sense of style. Why haven't I ever seen you around town? Jesus strikes sexy smile, entranced by Summer's beauty. I'm new to town, so I'm just uh, helping out where I can. Maybe you could use some help with your work. I could always use some help studying. Jesus and Summer start giggling as they stare seductively in one another's eyes. Meanwhile, Morty looks annoyed. Cut to interior, Zero Mass Hotel, casino. Rick is floating at a poker table wearing sunglasses and smoking a cigar when he pushes forward his holographic chips. I'll raise you 500,000 fleur bulbs. Surprise chatter are heard amongst the surrounding aliens. One alien, a giant stone alien, face remains unfazed. The stone alien grins as he pushes all his holographic chips forward. The other aliens gasp. The dealer, ever so slowly, flips over the final card and... Hells yeah! Rick flips over his cards. He has a royal alien flush. The giant stone alien looks pissed. Rick takes the holographic chips and pulls them closer towards him as they turn into light, beaming into his pocket. And thank you. Rick stands and floats towards the bar where Beth, with disheveled hair, is with Boosty. Oh, hey, Dad. This is my new friend, Boosty. Rick lifts his sunglasses onto his forehead. And you must be the sleazy horror species my daughter's trying to save from extinction. Rick takes a sip from his flask. Dad! My name is Bustamante Six Oxford Sino, last of the Zambrian people, and the rightful heir to. So, what's your species deal? Hmm? Were you too stupid to grow your own food, or did you accidentally sell yourselves off to a technologically superior race? What the hell, Dad? Be polite! Rick just takes another sip from his flask. Well, it all actually started with the first fallopian war of the Falfazar, in which. Rhetorical question. I don't actually want to hear about your non-existent species. Anyway, I made myself a million flurbles here. So, how about we get some rickety wrecked, y'all? I don't know, Dad. I don't think that's a very good idea. Ooh, but bad. This could be an opportunity to finally get some of that bonding time you and your old man have been wanting. Rick gets three big liquid floating balls from the bartender. Yes, my sweet, sweet Beth. You weren't operating on me for another two and a half transfloropian moon cycles. We should have some fun. Yeah, honey. Listen to the last of the primitive donkey species. I have wanted to get to know you better, Dad. Okay, let's do it. Rick, Beth, and Boosty raise their balls of floating liquid. Hell yeah! Cheers to the frickin' weekend! The three stuff their liquid balls into their mouths as music up. Vacation by the Go-Go's and we begin montage. Interior, alien magic theater, later. A purple tentacle alien magician waves a wand on stage, performing a trick just as Beth and Rick, riding Boosty, appear through a portal beside the magician. They trot past the magician when Beth shoots a new portal underneath. The magician falls into it, followed by a second portal directly above, trapping the magician in a paradoxical portal loop. Rick and Beth high-five each other as, Exterior, Alien Vegas Lake, later. Boosty, with Beth on his shoulders, is hover skiing as Rick skis beside them. The spaceship dragging them hits a bump, making Boosty and Beth wipe out while Rick sticks on board.
Close on, Boosty and Beth as they emerge from the water, as they look at each other seductively and begin making out. Exterior, Alien Elvis Church, later. And they keep at it, until we pull out to reveal Beth and Boosty on the steps of a church, wearing trashy wedding outfits as an octopus alien dressed like Elvis officiates. Rick stands to the side, intoxicated, while Boosty carries Beth down the stairs into a small floating building with a sign, Lightspeed Honeymoon, outside. They hop inside and boom, the building takes off. Seconds later, it returns to where it started. Boosty and Beth emerge from the building, still making out as they fall into the stairs of the church. Music fades as we end montage. Fade to black. Fade in. Interior, Rick and Beth's hotel room. Morning. Close on Beth, face on the ground, slowly waking, completely hungover. She looks to her side to find Boosty sleeping. Hey, Boosty. Time to... Beth shrieks as she quickly pan out to see what she's seeing. Boosty, totally disemboweled, guts scattered across the floor. Rick walks on screen drinking a carton of milk. Walking over, he sees what is happening, quickly spitting out his milk. Oh man, that milk takes off. End Act 1. Act 2. Interior, Rick and Beth's hotel room continuous. We return to Rick and Beth with Boosty's guts all over the floor. Beth on the floor is shaking in the fetal position. Oh man, what a night! He's, he's gone! Rick notices the body, but just totally doesn't give a shit. So, for tonight, I'm between like the 10th dimensional disco and canine comfort. What the hell, Dad? Boosie is dead and all you, you want to do is party? Well, it's bound to happen sooner or later. You know, now he's up in imaginary heaven with the rest of his no longer existent species. I was finally going to leave Jerry. We were going to start a family. How did this happen? Who cares? Anyway, the horse is dead. It looks like it's time to go home. Rick puts his hands in his pockets, searching around. He looks distressed. Shit, I lost the keys and my portal gun is out of juice, thanks to those... Javarian strippers. <laughs> well, you know, it looks like we'll have to retrace our steps. You are no longer going on adventures with Morty, Dad. Jerry was right. You are a bad influence on this family. Says the woman who married a sad, dying species of horrors. Beth looks sad when pounds are struck against the door. Security, open up. Shit, they're on me. You killed him, didn't you, Dad? Didn't you? Of course not. That'd be a waste of my time. I won that money yesterday using a light spectrum sunglasses so I could see all the cards. You what? Just don't worry, just relax. I have a plan. Now you just gotta trust me here. Quick, take these. Rick hands Beth a dozen white tablets. Beth swallows the tablets and immediately collapses to the floor. Beth foams at the mouth as her eyes turn bright yellow. Rick exits screen. The two security officers forcibly break into the hotel room. Shit, he's ordering on Zupa Dupes. Quick, get her the antidote. The security guard kneels down, about to inject Beth with the antidote, when Rick swings both security guards across the head with a lamp. Rick picks up the antidote, injecting it into Beth's arm. Beth is immediately cured. Come on, let's get out of here. Rick grabs for Beth's hand as they run out of the room. Cut to interior, Smith living room, day. Jesus and Summer are making out on the couch, while Morty sits in the adjacent chair with an irritated look. Hey, Mary. I mean, Summer. You mind fetching me a glass of water from the kitchen, sweet stuff? Oh, sure, sweetie. Summer gets up from the couch. Oh, don't go too far. I'll be right back, honey bud. Summer walks into the kitchen. You know she is like half your age, right? Never been a problem back home. Honestly, 12 is more my type. What the hell, man? It's my sister you're talking about. Whoa, 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 man. I thought we were boys. Don't take it so personally. After all, your sister's kind of... Just my side piece. I've been texting Summer's friend, Becky, and she is... That's it. Pack your bags, because it's about time you went home. All you've done since you got here is hit on my sister and not help on my history project. You're useless. Hold on. I have a great story for your project here. A long, long time ago in a desert far, far away. Flashback to exterior, Israel, desert, biblical times. We see Jesus as he relives his past at a dinner with an Arabic-looking Lazarus, Martha, and Judas. There was this loser named Lazarus who got sick and died. So, being the total awesome person I am, I brought him back to life. Jesus slaps the shit out of Lazarus as he wakes up. 
So this dude's sister, Martha, is all like, Thanks for saving my brother's life. Let me suck your dick. It's the least I could do. <laughs> Martha, super sexy, feels of Jesus when Judas interrupts. Then this fucking nerd comes along and he's all like, Hey, maybe we should sell this perfume. We gotta help the poor. And I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I need that to smell presentable for my death, you idiot. Fucking Judas, that motherfucking slimy piece of stinking dog shit. Hey, uh, are you okay, man? Jesus regains control of his temper. Oh, yeah, yeah, fine. Don't you worry about me. Just got a little worked up there. You should curse a lot for the Son of God. Oh, uh, back where I'm from, it's quite the compliment to be referred to as a stinking pile of dog shit. Right. Well, can you tell me another story for my project? Oh, man. That story was a drainer. Give me something to recharge before I tell another. Ten minutes, tops. Morty rolls his eyes, trying to hold back his impatience for Jesus. <sighs> Alright, I'll be upstairs. You got it, boss. I'll be right behind you. Morty exits, visibly annoyed. Summer walks back into the room and sits down next to Jesus, handing him the water. Oh, thanks for the water. Quick, close your eyes. Summer closes her eyes when Jesus puts some red food coloring into the water. Check it out! Turn it into wine. Ooh, the guy who knows magic. What a turn on. Summer starts kissing Jesus on the cheek and neck. Jesus has a mischievous look. Speaking of magic, Morty said there was a magic kit in the garage. Cut to interior, zero mass hotel, hallway. Beth and Rick are being chased down the hallway by hotel security. Rick pushes over a gumball machine head alien in front of him and keeps running. The gumball alien's head breaks open, leaving a mess of gumballs all over the floor. The guards continue to run as they trip over the gumballs. Rick grabs for Beth's hand as they jump off the interior hallway balcony. They start rapidly falling when they... Interior, zero mass, hotel, lobby, continuous. Become weightless again. Rick and Beth swim towards the exit when slot machines with legs and feet attack. The slot machine gets Rick in a chokehold when Beth pulls the machine's lever. Its reels go round and round, disorienting it. With the machine subdued, Beth swings the machine into another slot machine, about to attack from behind. Nice, Beth. Looks like the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. The two start swimming towards the exit again. Minus the total psychopath gene. Exterior, zero mass hotel, continuous. An alien blob ballet is about to get into a limousine spaceship when Rick tramples it into a green pile of mush. Quick, get it! Rick and Beth jump into the spaceship and pilot it away. Interior, alien spaceship continuous. Beth and Rick are now speeding away in their stolen spacecraft as they recklessly swerve through traffic. Alright, we bought ourselves some time before those intergalactic morons catch up with us. Quick, Beth, take the wheel. Beth and Rick start switching seats. Why the hell do we have to switch? Rick settles into the passenger seat. I have to charge my phone. Rick plugs his phone charger into a port on the spaceship. What the hell, Dad? We don't have time for that. I thought my genes made you smarter than that, Beth. I'm charging my phone to see if there's any clue on it to find my keys. Rick is looking at his phone. Oh, look at that. I have 500 missed calls from your idiot husband. Not the dead one. Oh, no, I forgot to check in with Jerry. What am I going to tell him? I've made a huge mistake. Beth starts crying. <laughs> we are talking about Jerry here. Just bring him some cheap souvenir magnets and he'll forget all about it. Oh, and look who's calling again. No, don't pick up. Your significantly out of your league wife is busy at the moment. Can I <laughs> take a message? Interior, Morty's room. Marty's on the other line, talking discreetly. No, Rick, it's me. Morty looks out his window as Jesus stands at a Explore the Afterlife $50 booth. A random person gives <laughs> Jesus $50. Rick, hypothetically, if a historical... Intercut between Morty and Rick. How hard you fuck up, Morty. Jesus stabs the rando in the chest and then resurrects him. <laughs> the person runs away crying. Jesus walks into Rick's garage. <laughs> well, Rick, I'll have you know everything's going just peachy here. You, you're you really missing out. Summer and I talked Jerry his multiplication tables today. Ah, right, Marty. And you cured Michael J. Fox of Parkinson's, right? Hey, Rick, you can't say that. That's not politically correct. Politics are stupid, Marty. Stay the hell away from him. Morty sees Jesus exit the garage, now looking super buff. Well, well, I'm just calling to tell you how great things are, Rick. Fine. Fine. 
Fine. Fine. Well, it seems like you just called to waste my time, so I'm gonna hang up now. Rick hangs up the phone and ends intercut. Interior of Morty's room. Morty notices the paper Jesus dropped earlier. He uncrumples it to reveal it reads, Morty Smith. Morty has an angry look. Interior spaceship. What was that about? Yeah, don't worry about it. Let's take a look at these pictures. Rick presses something when drunken back that taking a selfie wearing a surgical outfit and holding a scalpel standing beside disemboweled boosty is projected on the windshield. No. Seriously? No, 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 Holy this can't be. crap. Holy crap, you murdered your horse husband. Look who's the irresponsible one now. I'm an awful person. I, I don't think I can live with myself. Beth tries to kamikaze the spaceship by driving it directly into the ground. They're about to make impact when Rick takes back control just in the nick of time. Mm, guess I went a little too far on that one. Beth is crying frantically with her hands covering her eyes. I don't want to live. Rick keeps flying the spaceship from when a spaceship hits them from the side, knocking them straight out of the sky. Cut to exterior, Smith backyard, day. Jesus, now jacked, is sitting in a circle with Summer, attractive girls, and Jerry. Jesus is shirtless with nothing other than his metal collar and hippie pants. <laughs> Everyone else is dressed in women's 70s era hippie attire, including Jerry. Jesus is taking a huge hit from a bong as everyone cheers him on. He exhales the smoke and passes the bomb to Summer, when Morty comes outside with an infuriated look on his face. What the hell, JC? You're supposed to be helping me with my history project. Uh-oh. Looks like someone's experiencing some trouble in paradise. What the hell are you doing here? Dad? JC convinced me I need to get in touch with my energy, Jerry. Now, thanks to him, I feel like a free spirit again. I think you just need to relax, Morty. How about you take a hit? Morty starts running towards Jesus. Chill? Chill? I think it's about time. Morty starts levitating, magically picked off the ground. What do you think of this new trick, guys? <laughs> I learned some new tricks from your grandpa's magic set. Wow, JC, that's amazing. You really are getting good at magic. Summer, can't you see he's using Rick's invention to do this shit? Morty, you are just jealous of his God-given talent. Just look at him! He doesn't even look the same! Just because JC chooses to work out and be healthy while you play video games doesn't mean you have to hate him for it. You don't understand, Summer. He's... Jesus forces Morty's mouth shut with his newfound powers as Morty tries to talk but only mumbles are heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys want to mm -hmm. see a new magic trick? Yeah. All right, quick, close your eyes and cover your ears. Everyone but Morty follows Jesus' direction. See, Morty? Face of your grandpa's talking miracle box, I don't have to pretend to have miracle powers anymore. Now I have real ones. This new world is great. Talking picture boxes, sticks that make sweat smell good, and cow between two pieces of bread. The old world sucked more than donkey ball soup, and that last thing that is going to happen is you bringing me back there. Bye-bye, Morty. Jesus sends Morty into the air and sends him crashing through the roof of the Smith garage. Now open your eyes. Jerry and the women open their eyes up. And with a wave of my hand, I made Morty vanish out of thin air. Jerry and the women applaud as Jesus takes a bow. Now who wants to disappear next? End of Act 2. Act 3. Interior. Underground lair. Rick and Beth, roughed up with bags covering both of their heads, are placed on the ground by two giant stone aliens. The stone aliens remove the bags from their heads. Well, shit. We pan out to reveal an underground cave with several small active volcanoes spewing out hot lava as the stone aliens begin chaining Rick and Beth to the wall. Fluxo, the stone alien from the poker game earlier, approaches Rick and Beth. You really thought you could cheat me, Fluxo the Destroyer? Out of 500,000 flurbos and gets away with it, Rick Sanchez? Uh, considering your species has the same baseline IQ as a guy who thinks life's a box of chocolates, well, yeah, I did. What? No, we not dum dums. Keep your cool, Fluxo. Well, Rick Sanchez, you was wrong to think you'd get away with this. You're still a bunch of stupids. Stop it! You have insulted our species and no feels bad for it for the last time. As a consequence, prepare us for you and your friend... Push in on Fluxo's face. ...to die. We pull out to reveal another stone alien approach Fluxo. Me excuses, sir. 
No like to butt in, but the death machine of the lava won't be ready to go for another 15 minutes. You got to be kidding me. Well then, start to prepare yourself to die in another 15 minutes. Flexo starts walking away. We really need to make better maintenances around here. That shit really ruins the suspenses. Flexo walks off screen. Well, where's her? Cut to interior Smith garage. Morty sits on the floor of the garage bleeding out with broken arms and legs. Morty, struggling to hold on to life, coughs up blood as one of his eyes hangs out of the socket. Computer, <coughs> help me. Yes, Morty Smith, I can rebuild you. We have the means, we have the technology. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Robotic arms protrude from the side of the supercomputer, holding down Morty's body to the ground of the garage. The computer is bringing a scalpel close to Morty when, cut to, interior hospital room. Beth and Jerry cry beside Morty as he is kept alive by life support. You, you were a good son, Morty. Why, God? Why? Why must you let him suffer this twisted fate? I just can't. Just take him from us already. Come on, honey. It's going to be okay. Jerry wraps his arm around Beth, escorting her from the room. As they leave, a portal opens beside the vegetative Morty. A robotic arm emerges from the portal, grabbing Morty and interior Smith garage. Bringing him through the portal, the Morty from the other dimension screams. What the fuck is happening here? The supercomputer stabs Morty in the chest with a syringe before slicing off his limbs and dangly eye. Morty screams, ah! followed by the supercomputer replacing Morty's limbs with Veggie Morty's limbs, fused on by a laser. Morty wiggles his new appendages. Wow, that actually feels a whole lot better. Is there anything else I could do for you, Morty Smith? We push in on Morty with an angry, vengeful face. What exactly are Jesus' weaknesses? Exterior Smith Backyard Day. Jesus is drinking a daiquiri, wearing sunglasses, chilling in an inflatable pool with Summer Jerry and the really attractive ladies from earlier. Hey ladies, check this out. Jesus flies out of the water and starts walking on top of it, flexing his muscles. Mm -hmm. The girls ooh and ah, ooh. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Suddenly, an unseen punch swipes Jesus across the face. Jesus' head spirals down as an invisible force pile drives him. The ladies and Jerry shriek, jumping from the pool. Oh no! The ghosts are back! Don't hurt me! Jesus emerges from the broken pool, trying to get the invisible force off him. Jesus throws the invisible attacker off as it is revealed to be Morty in a red lightweight suit. It's time to head home, Jesus. Morty, now at lightning speed, takes off as he delivers super fast punches on Jesus from several angles. You don't understand, Morty. After Jesus takes a few blows, Jesus manages to grab Morty and hold him tight in both hands with his super strength. Morty struggles to break free from Jesus' grasp. I can't go back there. You don't know what it's like to be dicked over by your best friend. I don't give a shit. You tried to kill me, asshole. Morty, with a new ability to shrink, turns tiny as he easily escapes Jesus' grasp. Tiny Morty runs up Jesus' arm and starts causing havoc as he beats into Jesus' eardrum. Get out of my ear! Leave my ear alone! Jesus stumbles from side to side, holding his head in pain. To remove Morty, Jesus uses his finger to fling him out. As Morty falls from Jesus' ear, he returns to normal size. Jesus picks Morty up using levitation, holding him tight against the wall of the house. Jesus walks towards Morty. Sorry it had to be this way. Jesus is walking towards Morty, preparing to end his life with a skull-crushing punch, when BOOM! Somewhere from behind whacks Jesus in the head with an aluminum bat. No one messes with my brother and gets away with it, except me. Interior Smith Garage Day. Morty and Summer are carrying an unconscious Jesus into the garage, throwing him on the ground as they enter. Thanks for helping me back there, Summer. You're my little brother. It's my job to watch out for you when Dad chickens out. Plus, you were right. JC was some sort of prick. He'll just be that older bad boy I regret hooking up with when I look back on my teenage years. Thanks, Summer. Jesus starts mumbling as his eyes begin to open. Shit, he's waking up. Supercomputer, quick, send Jesus back. Jesus, groggy, is beginning to get up when swoosh! A purple zap hits Jesus. The flash disappears and Jesus is gone. Oh. My. God. I just spent the whole weekend hooking up with Jesus Christ! Summer starts looking at her cell phone and walking away. I gotta text all my friends about this. Morty sighs with a disappointed look. Huh. Cut to interior, underground lair. We return to Rick and Beth, still chained to the wall. 
Well, I never thought I'd go out deaf by a moron. Beth has small tears coming from her eyes. I don't care. I deserve this. You are right. I am the irresponsible one. Ah, worry about it, Beth. Just look at me. I do irresponsible things all the time. Beth starts crying louder with more tears. I came here to help, and I just ended up wiping out an entire species instead. You were right. We should never have come here. Beth, as your father, I've always... Flexo enters on screen, interrupting. Prepare to... Shut it, Rocket. I'm trying to have a heart to... heart with my daughter here. We aren't Rockheads. We are Stone Floreans of the planet... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one cares, Stone Brain. Now... Let me comfort my daughter here, who just wiped out a primitive civilization of horse people. Then you can use your prehistoric era death machine to whack us. Beth stops crying. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I guess you really do care. Nah, no worries, honey. Daddy's always got your back. Rick and Beth try to hug each other, still chained. The onlooking stone aliens deliver a sweet, aww, noise. Wait. Did you say horse species don't mean Zimbrarians, do you? Uh, yeah, that was us. What? That is no way. Yo, guys, they murdered the Zimbrarians. You murdered our mortal enemies. Really thank that from you peoples. Oh, uh, thanks? I was supposed to use four bows to murder King and last remaining heir, but it looked like Yules took care of it. So I guess we don't have to kill yous after all. Flexo and chains Rick and Beth from the wall. Yo, balance it, guys. Flexo puts out his fist with a smile on as Rick and Beth awkwardly return Flexo a pound. Sorry about all that. Let my anger get best of me sometimes. My wife really thinks should see counselor. Anyway, since we murder mortal enemies, is there a way we repay? Rick and Beth look at each other. Interior of Rick's spaceship, outer space. Rick pilots his spaceship as Beth looks out the window, sad. Well, we got the spaceship back, avoided death, get to go home when it's all thanks to you. Yeah. Still can't get over what happened to Boosty, though. <laughs> yeah, well, Beth, that's like they say, what happens in Alien Vegas stays in Alien Vegas. Also, some zoop doop introduced retrograde amnesia is gonna kick in in three, two, one. What are you talking? Beth's pupils widen up and then shrink back in. Dad, where am I? What happened? Well, you operated on the stupid alien horse and everything went great. whoop de fucking do Huh. Strange. I, I can't remember anything. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Exterior, Smith driveway, continuous. The spaceship is seen landing on the front yard. Beth is getting her bags out of the car while Rick gets out and... Interior, Smith Garage, walks inside. Morty, tidying their garage, sees Rick walk in. Oh man, Rick, you missed out on a real good time around here. We had such a good time without any mistakes or bad things happening. Rick continues to walk past Morty. Yeah, Morty. Things look real great around here. A hippie girl walks into the garage, high and frolicking. Yeah, the blood on the ceiling looks really great. Rick heads inside while Morty bears a defeated face. End of Act 3. Tag. Interior. Jesus' crypt. Jesus, still wearing the metal collar, is standing upon a rock as he addresses his disciples. Yeah, afterlife was awesome. I gave this dope speech to a bunch of angels and then I wrestled this demon child and ripped off its head. It was awesome. You can't tell anyone about this stuff, though. Top secret. Jesus picks up his bag and walks towards the door. Alright, well, it's time for me to return to the afterlife, guys. As Jesus is about to exit, Judas enters the crypt, startled to see Jesus. Jesus sees Judas and swiftly crushes his skull up against the wall. Fuck you, Judas! Do you understand anything he is saying? No, not at all. Exterior Jesus' crypt day. Jesus' disciples follow him outside as he waves goodbye to them. See you guys. I'll return and bring you all with me once you're ready. Jesus starts flying upward into the atmosphere. What idiots. Jesus starts maniacally laughing to himself. He continues to fly up and up and up until he gets too high and is ripped apart, leaving the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> End of episode.